Welcome to 101. I'm Rick Kaplan. My guest today is Michelle Fitzpatrick, and she is Vice President of 1031 Exchange Relationships at Northern Bank. Hello, Michelle. How are Hi, you? Hi, Rick. I'm <laughs> fine. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. And Michelle was just on our Women in Real Estate panel webinar, and uh, that was a great uh, discussion that everyone had on there and i'm that still getting a, emails <laughs> yeah that was a great it was actually a really great discussion and um it was so good to be part of that panel the women are just it was such a dynamic panel and there were so many things to talk about and we we really covered so many topics through real estate through women in real estate so i was i was happy to be part of that and that was our second year that we had put on that uh, that panel and the first year it was well received this year, I mean, it was explosive, Yeah, <laughs> which is a good sign. It was nice. They have a nice little following, too, just being part of Cruz. So they have a good following of, of, of people. So Yes, they do. Uh, you know, just going back to a little bit about, what, about Michelle. Uh, yes. <laughs> you know, I find it interesting. And it's, these are the things after we have really got to know each other in the last two or three weeks. Uh, you know, you started out uh, not like a lot of people in this industry, especially for female, uh, yeah. you, buying real estate at yeah. a young age. Yeah, it was, you know, I, I'm so happy that I took the advice of my parents um, when I was in my early, early 20s, like 23, I think I was when I bought my first two family house and um, thought that that was going to be a great way for retirement. I know I don't want to work the rest of my God-given life and I want to enjoy it. So I thought uh, buying real estate and I felt like the minute I bought my first two family, I was in this game or in this club that nobody else was part of. And so once you buy a property, it's so easy to just buy new more properties. And that's what I did. I just continued to refinance my existing properties, leverage up and keep buying. So you are so well skilled in in the art of real estate <laughs> from a young age, you know. So you know, you, most people they work for a company, they they learn a lot of these things, then they go out and do what you did. But you did it at twenty three years old. That's that's pretty impressive. Yeah, I have I was, to say. I'm I'm happy that I did, and I was advised well. In you know, you make mistakes along the way, and you learn from them. And I was lucky in that I got into banking after my real estate. So I learned so many more tricks just in learning about 1031 exchange. I didn't really know about it until I was in the business. So it, it certainly became an eye opener and part of um, working with my portfolio and making sure that I can take advantage of all the tax advantages. And, and that brings us to what you really do now is the 1031 exchange and you, you just wrote an article for the New England Real Estate Journal that uh, did. explains a lot about what the 1031 exchange and how helpful it can be to a lot of people. Right. And you, you had seven ways, the article is about seven ways that, yeah. that 1031s can help. You know, why don't we talk a little bit about that? Sure. You know, what, what, uh, what's your advice in going through these seven ways? So to give everybody just kind of a really, really, really brief overview of 1031 exchange. Um, 1031 exchange is a tax code. And it basically says if you're selling uh, investment property and you purchase investment property, you can defer your capital gains taxes. Um, a lot of people think that it's for these invest, you know, these big time investors and that have big, big commercial properties. And it's not, it's for the everyday investor that has a two family house that may, they may have inherited or that they may have bought when they were 23 years old and now they're going to sell it. So, and they have a huge capital gain tax. So this is for everyone that owns investment property. Um, and we do hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of exchanges a year for those types of people. And people come to us for all different reasons on why they exchange. Um, and like you said, I did write an article about it, talking a little bit about some of those reasons. And we'll just kind of go through a few of the reasons that people, that why, what we see people in exchanging. So um, first and foremost, estate planning is one of the biggest reasons why people exchange. Um, they may have purchased a property for short, short money 30 years ago. Their property is worth a lot of money now, 
and they have three children and their three children don't talk to each other. And, you know, that property is now going to be an inheritance and they don't want that property to be a burden. So they may sell the property and buy three properties for each of their children um, or leverage up. So it just really doesn't become this huge tax burden for their children. Um, That's a really big one. Um, We see people that want to diversify their portfolio that may own, again, same thing with estate planning. They may own one big apartment building or one big property and they want to diversify. They want to purchase multiple condos either for their children or they want to purchase a place down in Florida that they can rent out and possibly use. They may purchase something down the Cape that they want to eventually retire in. So diversification is a really, really big reason as well. Um, Consolidation, if somebody is, you know, has such a huge burden of management because they have 10 apartment buildings or 10 condos all around Boston and they just say, you know what, I just want to buy one big warehouse space, rent it to one person and not have to think about it anymore. Um, So they may consolidate their property and um, make their manage, lessen their management burdens. Um, Increasing depreciation. A lot of people don't realize that when you own an investment property, you you have this beautiful tax advantage for 27 and a half years where you can depreciate your property. If it was a commercial property, you can depreciate it over 39 years. But that nice little tax benefit goes away after 27 and a half years. So you'll start paying more money tax-wise. So if you purchase a new pro if you sell that property and purchase a new property, you can restart that clock of depreciation and start that that tax advantage again. So people use it for taxes. Um, another good one is cash flow. Just increasing your tax your cash flow. You could sell a property that you have in you know in a suburb and purchase it in purchase another property in Boston where there's um, maybe more opportunity to increase your your uh, cash flow or your monthly rent. Um, and maybe lessening some of your expenses. Um, Management relief, I actually, we do a lot of these people that just don't want the headaches anymore. They have a two family house, it's aging. I actually just did my own 1031 exchange um, for one of my two families in January. And management relief was a big thing. I didn't want the burden of having multiple tenants in a building. And I bought a nice little condo where I could rent it out. Um, All the management headaches were done. I didn't have to worry about plowing or landscaping or or any of the calls anymore. The management company is doing all of that for me now. So management relief, you know, as people are getting older, they don't want to be a landlord anymore. Um, So that's a good reason. Um, And lastly, leveraging up, just buying properties that maybe, in a, you know, that are better and that continue to increase your portfolio's value. So those are some of the reasons that we came up with of why people exchange and what we see every day at Northern 1031. Well, I have two questions. <laughs> yes. The first is, you, you said something about vacation homes. So if someone yes. has a, 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 let's say a two family and they sell that and they want to do an exchange into a, a single family vacation home uh, that they intend on using. So they'll have to, obviously they have to use it for investment uh, yes. purposes first, uh, not as their own personal residence to, to take advantage of the 1031 exchange. Yeah, that's a really, really good question. Thanks for asking that. Um, the IRS has very specific guidelines on how you can exchange into a vacation rental. And um, they offer, the IRS offers a safe harbor guideline, uh, which says we won't question your 1031 exchange if you follow these rules for the vacation rental. And it essentially says for the first two years or the first 24 month period, you need to rent out your property for a minimum of two weeks per year. And you have to, um, you have to restrict your personal usage to a minimum, to a maximum of 14 days per year. So you have to rent it two weeks and you have to minimize your usage, your personal usage to two weeks a year. And by doing that, that 
that says that falls under the safe harbor and the IRS will allow that exchange to happen. Anything that you do with that property after the two year period is up to you. So you can convert it to your second home um, and utilize it in that capacity. But to satisfy the safe harbor, it's just those two years. Oh, that's a great idea. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yep. and, the, and the second question I have is that you said that you sold a two family and bought a single family condo. Uh, I did. Now, one of the issues with condos is that if you go into a condo complex, or actually if it's like a, a building uh, and everything is rentals in there, a lot of banks won't finance that. You can't get mortgages on that. Yeah. So, um, you know, that, that's a good question. The place that I purchased restricted rental use to, I think it was less than 20%. So only 20% of the units could be rented. So that was a really big factor when I was purchasing the property. I had to make sure that if I was going to buy in a condo association, that I was going to be able to rent it. If I wasn't able to rent it, I wasn't able to complete the exchange. So the condo association that I purchased in and I had to talk to the management company prior, they only had 5% rental in there. Most of it's owner occupied. Um, I own my property in an LLC, like most people own their investment properties. So you do have to find a, um, a bank that will lend to an LLC for rental or investment purposes. And I got an investment loan. I did not get a, um, so I got a commercial loan it wasn't a residential mortgage. So it was a little bit unconventional, but most banks will be able to lend to your uh, LLC with a commercial loan for that real estate. Great information. I love the, I, I love the 1031 exchange uh, concept because yes. for people in the commercial real estate, especially it, it's ideal. Uh, it's such a great tool and it's, I believe it's underutilized, but you know, it's something that everybody should know about. If you own a two family house, it opens up so many options. We had a woman who was selling, um, her husband had passed away. She was selling a commercial property and um, was gonna buy just another commercial property. And we kind of opened our eyes about vacation rentals and um, you know, being able to purchase a, uh, an investment re residential property. and she, it blew her away. She was like, I thought I was going to be stuck with a warehouse space for the rest of my life. And now she's going to be purchasing something in Florida, which is her dream. So um, it works for everybody. Yeah. And that was something I just learned too. You know, so yeah. that was, I, I get something out of every interview I do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Oh, uh, Michelle, I want to thank you for doing this interview. Uh, we're speaking with Michelle Fitzpatrick and she's the vice president. Vice President of 1031 Exchange at uh, Northern Bank. And if you, someone wants to get a hold of you, Michelle, and get more information, how would they do so? The easiest way to get a hold of me is um, 1031 Exchange, sorry, 1031 at nbtc.com. So it's 1031 at nbtc.com or 781 569 1852. And those are my direct lines. They ring into my cell phone. So. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it, Rick. Thank you, Michelle. Have a great day. Thanks, you too. Thank you for watching today's interview. If you'd like to be a guest, a sponsor, or even advertise in the New England Real Estate Journal, you'll find our contact information in the description box below. You can also find all our social media platforms so you can follow us. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel.